Well, hello everyone. Happy week two to you. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've been enjoying all of the rain. We sure could use some more, that's for sure, but it's nice to have what we can get. Um, I hope you had a wonderful weekend and that your work week is going well. Hang on one second, I'm going to close the door. The dogs are barking. I have so many animals here right now. My daughter, my oldest daughter is a travel nurse and she's currently in Thailand and Vietnam and um, which is wonderful for her, but she's left all of her pets with me plus all of the pets here at this house. So it's a little wild here this week. But anyways, let's get on to um, uh, the weeks. First off, I wanted to talk about how much I enjoyed uh, your responses in Blackboard this week, the discussion board. And let me pull up uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm sure you guys all got a kick out of it. I was in the week one discussion forum and I was reading it. And a lot of you grew up in California and in Long Beach, which is very cool. Long Beach is my favorite town, and I've been all over the place, but I do love Long Beach. Okay, and I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly, Iris, I hope so. If not, please correct me um, so that I know, but I got the biggest kick out of when I started reading the um, discussion board, and it said, you had written, hi, I like your post. Most, if not all, my students have fancy cell phones, but use it for entertainment only. I post grade on Aries and parents rather send me emails asking about their students' grades. And then you wrote, I have no clue why my iPhone began typing in bold letters. This is how bad I am with technology. And I just started laughing when I saw that because, it, trust me, it's not because you're bad at technology. There, People can be really experienced at technology and they just start doing weird things. And I just, I got the biggest kick <laughs> out of that post seeing all the bold letters. And I'm sure anybody on the discussion board did too. I just got a new iPhone and I hadn't wanted to update my iPhone for a very long time. If you look in the back corner, you can see my rescue squirrel. She's listening to us. But um, I, I hadn't wanted to get a new iPhone and I updated like all the way. And next thing I knew there was like gadgets and gizmos aplenty, like uh, Disney's Little Mermaid. And I had to have the kids help me. Um, I didn't realize that the predictive text was just automatically on. And every time I tried to type something to my yearbook class and I'd write yearbook, it would put airbag. I don't even know where predictive text gets airbag from yearbook. So you're not the only one. And I think the thing that we have to remember about technology is no matter how experienced we are, or no matter how much we're just novices beginning to learn, you have to put ego aside to learn. And um, sometimes it's hard, you know, and I've said that before when we're, we're in these like power positions, these administ administrative positions, it's kind of hard to um, let our guard down. But that's how we have to learn technology. And there's a lot of times that I don't know things and I'll, I'll ask someone, ask a student, ask a friend, or, um, you know, I used to build uh, web pages for bands all the time. And then when I stopped coding for a while, I was like, wait, how did I do that again? What did I do? So, you know, that, that just, that just happens. And I love that you bravely posted that up there because it happens to all of us and not everybody is so brave. So thank you for sharing that um, with us. Okay, so uh, this week in week two, let me go back to the page. You're looking at stages of collaborative design for e-learning. And one of the articles that it, a PDF article that I asked you to read was overview of understanding by design, by design and the design template. And then there's a video part one and part two um, by Grant Wiggins. And notice that the second video is optional, but it's always good if you want to learn to to look at, you know, what's up there. But basically, um, it's interesting how the, it always works this way. I had a student teacher in my room today and they were asking me all of these questions for one of their classes. And they were like, I'm getting ready to de design you know, lessons and I don't understand what to do. And I'm like, backward design. And of course, you know, I wasn't even thinking about week two of our class, like it aligning, but it does. Um, and if you've read over the PDF and if you've studied this in your district and you might already be doing this with your departments, 
it's got the steps to backward design in our PDF and it says identify the desired results. What student, should students come away understanding or being able to do? Determine acceptable evidence that demonstrates the desired results. Plan learning experiences and instruction aligned with desired results. So you really have to decide each time that you create a lesson. Um, even with e-learning, you have to decide what do you want your students to get out of it. And um, he was like, oh, so you want them to do all this common core? And I'm like, well, no, you have to decide what your learning target is and then go from there. You're probably not going to hit all of your standards in every single one of your lessons. So you have to decide what do I want to touch on or what do I want them to learn? When I started building technology in my classroom, you know, first off, and those of you that use technology a lot, I know some of you were talking about um, oh, having, you know, Chromebooks in your classroom, your own Chromebook, which is wonderful. But when you first start building technology in classroom, you kind of have to do a giant, you know, broad sweep of how many people know what and uh, how many people are going to need help. Uh, it's always good to use students that are more advanced to help students that are learning the basics. Uh, it's a great way to um, allow collaboration in your classroom. It's a great way to empower students and um, they love to lead. They love to teach each other. And then once uh, an advanced uh, technology student uh, helps a basic technology student, then that basic technology student can go off and help somebody else. And it's important that, you know, you're constantly looking at that. But so once you design your lesson, you want to think about what they're going to get out of it. So he was asking me some of the things I wanted, you know, for technology. Well, when I first got my students, you know, they did not know how, even though they were in high school, they were not able to be proficient about just uploading their Google documents and sharing them with me. They could share through email, but a lot of times they didn't even know where the share button was. They didn't know what to type in to maybe be able to find my email if I wasn't there to guide them. When we started using the Turnitin program, uh, which is, you know, similar to like, you know, turning something into Blackboard, um, they weren't checking because of the Chromebooks, the screen, they were missing windows and boxes and they thought they had submitted and then they didn't check to see that it was really confirmed and it hadn't gone through. So it was a lot of things like that. So I, I had to decide when I was looking at my technology standards start with the basic and design my lessons with that in mind to get them through basic technology and then move to more advanced. The same when you're doing things like um, collaborative conversations and you want them to do some type of multimedia presentations like with Google Slides or something like that. When they're first starting out, you might just look at basic technology uh, standards that you want to meet. And then as time goes on and you can see that they're getting it, then you could progress to something more advanced. Maybe you're not only looking for content, but you're also looking, do they know how to uh, put a sound link into a multimedia presentation? Do they know how to do a YouTube link with not just the link, but actually the screen coming up on the slide? Are they looking at graphic design and, and those types of things? So it may be something that you're looking at technology you know, for that. You may be looking more to uh, listening and speaking skills and ask them to present their multimedia presentations and find a way to bring in audience participation, uh, be a good audience member, teach them things to be a public speaker. So you have to decide where you want to get. And that's what backwards planning is. And I love when um, uh, it, it says, let me find it in here. <laughs> the old adage assessment drives instruction is true what we assess is what we should instruct attention to how the design elements in a unit are aligned makes the desired results a more likely event so that's where backwards planning comes in to be really helpful so you're not you can create all these fabulous lessons but if it doesn't get you where you want to go and you don't structure it so that it gets you where you want to go it's a lot of extra work for you without you know uh meeting what you need to meet uh, in your curriculum with the students and also with administration. You know, if they come in to observe or see that, they're going to ask you about that. Uh, one of the things that we're doing in our district right now with our learning targets that I really like for just an immediate assessment um, for uh, students and for admin is writing what on the board you're doing that day, 
why you're doing it that day, and how we're going to be able to assess that. And I think if you just keep that in mind when you're doing your backward design, you know, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? How are we going to assess that? That'll help you get through something before you put too much time into doing some type of lesson that's that's not going to meet your needs and the students' needs. Okay, um, let me go back up here. Okay, um, notice in the exercises that now you've had a week to explore and learn about the mechanics of Canvas, and I hope you're all doing well with that and relaxing and enjoying it. It is time to build out your class according to the requirements, and notice I have them listed here. In assignment number one, Canvas, it says to submit this assignment, click the assignment one Canvas title above, click the written submission button, and paste the link to your course, 50 points. Um, so when you paste the link to the, to, to the course, you shouldn't have any problems with Blackboard. If you're having a hard time submitting to Blackboard, sometimes it can be... Uh, you're using Safari and it wants you to use Firefox or you're using uh, Firefox and it wants you to use Chrome. So sometimes you have to just kind of play around with that and see. There were a couple people that were having a hard time with that. Uh, remember, remember the discussion week too is um, some of you already may be familiar with understanding by design while others, may be read, while others may be reading about it for the first time. After reading the overview article and watching the video, share whether your current lesson design shares any similarities, if you follow a different model of lesson planning, your positive or negative views of UBD. And so pretty easy week for you. If you need me, you know how to get hold of me. And um, I don't wanna talk too long in this video, so I wish you all well, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.